When we are talking about migrant women, particularly migrant women workers, we have to recognize that they are a very large body. For example, a computer scientist who goes from South Asia to work in the United States is also a migrant woman worker. Similarly, a woman who goes to work as a domestic worker in the GCC countries is also a migrant woman worker. So there is a wide difference in terms of the background of the two women. So I would say the work that our members and partners do focuses on low waged women migrant workers. And most of these women, about 80% of these women are actually working in the service sector. So they are domestic workers, uh, construction workers, factory workers, garment sector workers. The commonality is they do not earn a lot of money. They are in the low waged sector. The second thing is all these women go as temporary workers. It's not they get a permanent residency and go. So they go on a contract. They go for two years or um, uh, sometimes uh, if they are going to Israel, for example, they may go for five years, but they fall under the temporary labor migration regime. Because of the nature of the work that they are going for, also because of the way the recruitment is done, because of the processes of migration, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that are built into the system. So for example, if they are working, uh, if they are going as a domestic worker, in another uh, person's household. They don't have a common language, they do not understand the culture, and they work in a private household. So they don't have a community there, they don't have, in, they cannot contact anybody. So the situation is, let's say if we speak generally, the situation in the, uh, there is very little rights protection at workplace, at the different workplaces. If they have a, so for example, if they have a problem with the employer, if they are facing non-payment of wages, if they are facing overwork, they cannot complain to anybody. It's difficult to use things. So, so workplace rights are, there is very little protection of workplace rights. Secondly, the situation, there are some problems in the recruitment system, in the way that they are doing the migration. So generally, I would say, they are, in terms of right protection, there is very low rights protection, so which uh, impacts on the uh, on their situation. So the situation is not very very worker friendly. I would say the situation is mixed um, because the the South Asian states, particularly um, Sri Lanka, Nepal. Bangladesh, uh, these three countries have made a conscious decision to send workers abroad on the temporary labor migration regime. There is also a conscious promotion of women's labor migration. Um, so some laws have been made and I would say some laws are good. Uh, there are and those laws which uh, needed amendment, some amendment is going. So the mixed scenario is sometimes the laws are good but not being implemented. Sometimes the laws are very protectionist towards women but they don't protect the, uh, uh, their rights. And uh, finally, when we are talking about migrant workers, it is not only the laws in the countries of origin that are important. It is also extremely important for um, the migrant worker to have good laws in countries of destination. And when we are talking about countries of destination, particularly in the GCC countries, the, uh, the laws are not very uh, rights protective towards migrant workers. Yeah. Uh, I would say the women are at risk not because they are not strong, 
not because they uh, have any problems, inbuilt problems. The women are facing difficulties because of systemic reasons, because of legislative reasons. So, the governments, particularly if we are talking about governments of countries of origin, they by and large, they have not been able to negotiate very well with countries of destination. They, have, they do not seem to have a lot of bargaining power with countries of destination. What we have noticed is uh, there is also very little coordination and cooperation among countries of origin. Seems like a competition and like a race to the bottom. So you are sending, suppose uh, one country says our, my, our workers should be getting, let's say, they say $300. Another country comes in, oh, our workers will go for 150 And that brings down the situation. Governments have created a recruitment system. And the recruitment system needs reform. The recruitment systems need to be more accountable towards the workers. Be and uh, so that's one, one area that they could focus on. Governments have tried to focus on uh, information, awareness raising within communities. Um, there is a lot of work that is going on on safe migration information generation. I think after so many years of work, comparatively speaking, women are going women and men are going with more information than before. But if they have information, if I have information, that doesn't mean that I have the power to act on that information. Sometimes the system actually stops people from acting on the information that they have. So I think these are the, and most importantly, the rights protection at workplaces. That needs to be. So, governments should have stronger bargaining power with countries of destination. Yeah. Now, this is, this is a very, very um, important uh, issue and it is a very uh, problematic and uh, uh, complex issue. Discrimination, violence do not only happen in countries of destination. Many women over the last five years, uh, 30 member organizations of, or more than 30 member organizations of GetW in many countries around the world have done research uh, with women migrant workers. And the data that is coming out is discrimination and violence in the lives of the women have started much before they migrated. So even in the home communities, even in the households, even in the home country at workplaces, the women from these demography, the women from these groups have recorded, have reported a lot of discrimination and violence. That has continued in countries of destination as well. And most importantly, what we are also, and most shockingly, what we are also noticing is there is stigma and rejection when women are returning from their countries of, uh, after having worked in another country. Now, this is a huge problem. So, the women that in the last two years, our partners had done research with nearly 500 women workers who had returned to the home country. And this was in four countries of South Asia, they had done the research. Many women reported that upon return, they felt they experienced rejection and stigma from their families, from their communities. And they were very upset that their state also, their countries also do not recognize their contribution to the economy and because they felt that they had worked hard and data shows that women migrant workers actually send all their earnings back home comparatively to men. So 
in spite of that, they felt that there was not much recognition. I think there is a lot that needs to be done. Uh, let's uh, start with, um, and, and in this particular area, I think our media, our colleagues in the media have a very big responsibility. Now, when there are problems that the women migrant workers are facing, we from the civil society talk about it. Women who return, they also talk about it. Women in countries of destination also where they have freedom, they talk about it. And that goes out in the media. The hope behind that is if we put out the problems, the problems will get solved. But what happens is by talking exclusively, exclusively about the problems, somewhere the stigmatization also increases. All women who return are seen as abused women. All women who, are, uh, who return are seen by society because our attitude towards women, we, live, we all live in patriarchal societies. Our attitude towards women is always a little bit suspicious. If you, what kind of dress she is wearing, how she is, who is she looking at, who is she smiling at, what exactly. So all these things also play a role. So the moment they, uh, these problems are highlighted, this also enhances or aggravates the stigma. So the challenge that media colleagues have here is how can they tell stories that will talk about problems but also talk about the strength of the women, the resistance of the women. How can, what is the way? And this is a very, very challenging task for the media because media, you know, they will also have limited space, limited time. But within that, how could they do both? How could they comment on the stories? How could they present the stories in a way that will not put the blame on the woman? that will actually expose the hypocritical value system of our society. So that's the bigger, big challenge that media has today. Finally, I would say our states also have a role in this. They can play a role because in the last 10 years or a little more than 10 years, the increase that, in, that we are seeing in women's labor migration, international labor migration, is because of the policies that our states have created. Because there is an opportunity, that's why women are going. There is a lot of promotion of labor migration that is also happening. Now, all our states have communication outlets. How could they present a strong image of the women? How could they publicly acknowledge that these migrant women are contributing to our economy, that they are contributors to the development of our state. So if there is public acknowledgement of the, the contribution of women to the state, I think that may change the narrative. In all my years of work, I have been amazed by the strength and the power that women have. Even today, the, despite all the difficulties that women migrant workers in low wage jobs face, they have shown tremendous strength. And in many countries of South Asia, upon return, they're also organizing, they're forming groups, collectives. There are in, in Nepal, we are talking in Nepal now, in, in Nepal, there are groups who have formed, you know, Sramanjibi Mahila Sanjal has been created, Returni Migrant Women Workers Groups have been created, and they are strong, they are advocating for their own rights. In countries of destination, also they are organizing, and there are community volunteers from the countries, they are also supporting them. So I would say, if we continue our efforts, if we, con if we reflect on what is the problem and what are the uh, opportunities if we if, if we seriously try to analyze and move forward i would say that there is hope that changes can happen